Welcome to Minutes by Minutes. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we're here to talk about what goes on in the township, the village. Mm -hmm. You know, those government people that make laws and regulations that affect you out there. That's right, Elgin. And whether you live in the village of Oxford, the village of Leonard, Oxford Township, or Addison Township, these are the people that you went and elected. And the committees and the commissions that make decisions that directly affect you, whether you chose to go to that meeting or not which could lead to a taxing situation. Yep, you want to <laughs> definitely attend these meetings and find out what's going on. And if you can't attend them, you might go to our TV station, OCCTV.org, and click on programs, and you'll more than likely find that uh, particular session out there, right? Yeah, but don't try talking to it because it won't hear you. <laughs> no, uh -uh. but if you don't attend these meetings and stay abreast of what's going on, obviously, things can happen to you, as you pointed out. Yeah. And uh, may not be yeah. too too uh, liking to you, uh, and that's where the humor comes in, right? That's right. And if you see that program and you go, "Holy smoke, I've got something to say," well, it's not listening. Right, it is not. <laughs> uh, other than that, there's one of us who spreads rumors, and uh, so you want to pay attention to what we talk about <laughs> today. And what we're really going to talk about is three different meetings. So we get a chance. We're going to talk to the Ox about the Oxford Township Board of Trustees meeting, which would be the mm -hmm. last one. Uh, the first mm -hmm. meeting would be the Oxford Village Council, and then the second one is the Leonard Village Council. Well, you in the end. picked the cream of the crop there. Didn't we you? did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, interesting things that uh, went on with the Oxford Village Council. <laughs> I bet you want to say, what were they? What? Were they, Elgin? <laughs> well, first of all, we want to talk about who's on that board. Uh, president of the uh, Village Council for Oxford is uh, Sue Basardet. Tom Kinnis serves on that board. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Dave Bailey is on that board as well. And uh, Maureen Helmuth and one more, Eric Dolan. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a pretty precise board. Um, they have quite a packet that usually they have to review before they go into meetings, which most of these people that serve on these boards have to do that. They spend a good portion of probably the weekend before the meeting, you know, just going over the information. So you're so. saying, what? Yeah, what? <laughs> what is this? Did I get this? Oh, my God. i got to go through it all. Anyway, so that's what they do. And, of course, the first thing they did is a preliminary Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, they did uh, approve the, the agenda, um, but they wanted to um, add one thing to the agenda, and that would be um, a report would be added for what about the future police chief? Is there going to be a, a future police chief? And if so, when is it going to happen? Well, they have an acting one right now. They do. And Mr. I'm, Solwell. Right. Did you hear if um, Mike Solwell was placed as a full-time chief yet? I don't know. You got the notes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, they were supposed to have a meeting, uh, and I haven't heard the results of that meeting. We'll <laughs> inform you folks out there. You may find out before we do <laughs> in this particular case. huh? What do you think? So anyway, uh, unfinished business was the first thing. Resolutions. They had to draft some resolutions, um, and the attorney needed to review the resolutions before they could actually be brought to the council. That would be Bob Davis. It would be Bob Davis, and Bob is doing a pretty good job, you know, for the village, <laughs> and he works for other entities as well. Uh, yep. Does work for Addison Township and, and others, Leonard and, you know, quite a few. Um, and the things that were on the agenda as far as uh, working resolutions was a Park Street resolution, uh, bulk water resolution, and we'll get to that as we go down the line here. And, and of course, the police chief resolution. Um, call to the public. Arguments not on the agenda. Nobody. They just looked at their shoes. and there, was, there were people there, though, at this meeting, but they just didn't choose to speak on these topics not or yet. any other topic. And not yet. Okay. Uh, then they talked about bills. Uh, how much money are we going to have to shell out this month? Well, they said $42,000 roughly and 92 cents roughly uh, is the amount that they had to expense. Penny here, a penny there? A penny here, a penny there. And usually <laughs> yeah. if they don't have enough money, they just give you a call. Right. I see. You just write a check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, that's a rumor we're going to spread, folks. See how, the, how, the, how high that one bounced. <laughs> well, that may just stutter, did <laughs> it? <laughs> okay. Uh, unfinished business. Um, let me see. Policy resolution. 
they needed to have those resolutions that we just discussed before Bob Davis, before, as they, I said, they could actually move on them. Uh, new business was the next issue. Uh, budget changes. Uh, DDA uh, has roughly about uh, 91,000 less, or I'm sorry, lower uh, than the budget. In other words, they're spending less money. And of course, they haven't had a director for a while, and that could be the reason or a good portion of the reason. So they have an overage? Uh, well, there's really no over overage because the year hasn't ended yet. We'll see I how see. it ends up, right? Well. <laughs> Right now, they have the money to uh, deal with a new DDA, DDA director. And it's my understanding that at the next DDA meeting to be held, um, let me see, in July, I think, 17th, which mm -hmm. is on a Monday, uh, will involve uh, interviewing a couple of candidates for the position of downtown development director. So you heard that here, folks, first. They have cast their nets for DDA directors and village yeah. managers. Sure. <laughs> they have a swinging door. Here comes one. Hey, he looks good. Whoops, there he goes out the door. <laughs> I mean, a couple times that's happened, right? Uh, the magic word is yeah. next. Right. So we will really hold off on who the DDA director would be until he's actually nailed to the seat, super glued, and whatever. <laughs> so he's not going to go anywhere. Else. Okay. So we want to make sure. Right? When Bob Davis has his has his sign has his signature on a contract. Bob Davis has his signature, then we're ready to go. Well, one that's ironclad. And of course Bob Davis makes some pretty good ironclad. He's a good contracts. guy. Yep. Okay. Um, let me see. So that was a new budget change. They did talk about the water fund and it's the sale of Glassby, for example. They're saying that the property if it's to be used for a uh, home construction where the old uh, um, next to the water plant, you know, that the village owns. Yeah. Uh, that has been sold, and they're going to be building buildings there. And they said that the money uh, for the sale should probably go to the water fund. And that's what they're looking at this Why point. Why is that? Well, because uh, the water fund could use a little bit of shoring up. So could I. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it's because you write all those checks to the township and the village. I, I mean, because you're such a nice guy. <laughs> Hear the laughter. Yeah, right. He's a nice guy. <laughs> okay. Thank you, David. By, by the way, the community. Yeah, they, Thanks, uh, they me, thank you too. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, anyway, uh, Tom Kenneth says, well, why is the police fund higher uh, when 911 was uh, eliminated? And he had misread um, the financial information. Oh. And uh, actually, the, the acting village manager, he said, uh, actually, that's not the case. He said, uh, actually, they're better off. <laughs> and actually, when you look at line such and such, you'll see, you know, that. Someone but he said, I'll look into it if there's a problem. But Someone slip a decimal point? <laughs> they might have. Uh, so Tom Kenneth says, well, excuse me, okay, uh, I see it now. You said, okay. He said, I understand. I can see clearly I now. I can see, cle see clearly now. <laughs> yeah, and he did. And uh, so they kind of stepped that one aside. All right. Um, general fund. Let me see. He's, he's, they said that the wages are higher uh, due to uh, the previous manager's payout. So that was an indicator of you know why some monies you know were a little bit lower. That we call it a one-time shot. Yeah, but get this: the general fund is really in pretty good shape good. as far as village council is. And actually, they have a couple of ideas in terms of how they're going to handle the village management uh, down the line. They have hired a assistant. Um, to the assistant, I guess you'd put it that way. His name is Troy, and he's just come on. Um, he's the, the assistant to the temporary manager they to have. To the, the assistant temporary guy, yeah. That's what he would be. <laughs> so anyway, how long he's going to be there, he doesn't really know yet at this point. Depends on how quickly, you know, procedures can be put in place. Is and, uh, Susan Nasser, the uh, clerk, still on board? She's on a temporary agreement. Uh, where she's filling in until they hire a new clerk. And by the way, they're interviewing for uh, the clerk's position as we speak. With that, we'll be back. There right are vacancies. <laughs> there are. <laughs> we'll talk about those when we get back in just a moment. <laughs>
Welcome back to Minnesota White Minutes. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we are talking about uh, the Village Council. And uh, <laughs> actually, a lot of activity went on there, and a lot of things that are going to happen, I think, in the future, and the soon future, to come. Wouldn't you think? Why, of course. Okay. There'd be a whole raft of new personnel. <laughs> right, a new if raft. If you ever managed to hire them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't push them out in the stream. The new raft. Anyway, uh, next thing we're going to talk about is the Leonard Village Council. And that was held on July 10th. Uh, Mike McDonald, of course, is the president, and J Judy Verse is the uh, treasurer. Clerk is Cindy uh, uh, Groskoff, and trustee is Char Sotheby. Um, Lois Hoffman serves on that, and uh, Mr. Kennedy, which I didn't get his first name. It could be Jack. No, it's not Jack. Let's I just say it. it was Jack. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rumor was spread. I'm pretty sure it's not Jack. But anyway, those are the people that serve on the uh, Leonard Village Council. I, I always enjoy watching the Village Council people in Leonard. Uh, very interesting. R right back to the core of the, what uh, government is about, don't you think? Pretty I cool. think that building goes back to the core of when it started. Uh, yeah, and actually, <laughs> actually, they're uh, rebricking a lot are of they? the... Yeah. Uh, mo uh, mer I, I'm not sure when that building was built, but it's... One of the originals. <laughs> it was probably just before you were born, way back then. I'm not sure. Uh, yes. Well, <laughs> okay. There were green alligators and I know. Right, green alligators. <laughs> uh, a lot of quicksand and things like that. I see. People had a tendency to disappear back in those days. Whoa. <laughs> anyway, that's another rumor was spread. Uh, they did the pledge, of course. Um, they did an invocation. Char Sotheby, who's a trustee, led that group. <laughs> and uh, let me see. Minutes for June 12th was approved. Agenda, additional um, interlocal agreement. They want to put that on the agenda for building officials as new business. So we'll talk about that when we get down the line here. Interlocal agreement interlocal, between? Yeah, between Oakland County and Leonard. Okay. And I'll explain as that later, if you will. I want to hear it now. You want to hear it now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we can talk about it now if you want. <laughs> so interlocal agreement. Um, is in case of emergencies, uh, that kind of thing that might happen in Leonard, talk about hurricanes, no hurricanes, tornadoes, uh, blizzards in July and August, things and like that. You forgot tsunamis. <laughs> <laughs> and what they, what they are able to do with this um, agreement is bring in uh, individuals from all over to evaluate you know, what it's going to cost and what it'll take to, you know, get it repaired and fixed and up and running. I see, that used to be called an insurance adjuster. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, they have these interlocal agreements now all over, and it's pretty common. Okay. And uh, uh, for example, fire departments, there's usually an interlocal agreement between fire departments mm -hmm. where if they need assist, they just call, you know, oh, yeah. and they get the assist. Prime example of that was that explosion that occurred in Lake Orion where yeah. just about everybody in the local area, their fire departments were participating in That's exactly that right. Out. As a matter of fact, being you brought that up, you're a little ahead of the, the, the goat here. I always am. <laughs> <laughs> talk about goats because they're on the trails. I see. <laughs> anyway, uh, they did talk about that at the trustee meeting last night for the Oxford Township Trustee oh, Board. Um, Pete Schultz uh, received a letter from um, Orion Township. Sorry, I stole praising, your thunder. Praising, <laughs> pra yeah, right. <laughs> praising, uh, you know, uh, his fire department and the people that uh, helped to yeah. extinguish that particular blaze. All these local communities really participate together when there really is a need. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right, then they had a treasurer's report, and um, it was uh, received and filed. They went through this meeting rather quickly. Accounts payable uh, for June. Remember, they have several accounts that they pull funds from. Mm -hmm. One is the general fund, and they took about $20,269.65 from that fund. Major fund was $2,539.70. And then from the local fund, they took $87.50. Now, you would like that one. These were bills low. paid? These are bills that were paid, yes. Okay. And, of course, they have a mill park rec account also, which they haven't taken any money out of there for some time. How and is that mill coming along, by the way? Well, they need donations to help complete it. It's it's a long running process. You know, it's uh, it's not going to be done tomorrow. No, it's going to be done maybe the next tomorrow, <laughs> <laughs> or the next year, the following year, the year after that. Well, but anyway, they need money in order to it's a work complete in it. progress. It is. It would be a neat project once it's finished. Yeah. I think. Uh, public comment, uh, not on the agenda. 
again. Good thing they had their shoes signed because mm -hmm. they could see their image in the in their shoes. Um, a couple of people did speak up though. They said, "Whoa, wait a minute! Don't forget us." And his name is Mr. Appleby, and he spoke uh, of three different issues. He said that the alley, um, that there's brush near uh, Division Street in an alley. And he said and you can't see to get out, you know, past that. So he said he'd appreciate if somebody would do something about the, the brush. Unsafe for traffic. Unsafe for traffic. And people walking, too, could be, you know. Yep. Uh, what happened, he said, uh, to the trash pickup? He said, nobody's picked up trash. He said, it's about knee-high to an alligator. <laughs> Big alligator. And then someone said, there's an alley? No. <laughs> hey, there's an alley. That's why they call it alligator. Alligator alley. So anyway, so... Uh, they said, well, they should have picked it up, you know, mm -hmm. but if they didn't, we're going to contact them and they will be by. And oh, they'll so take the garbage care people said, oh, there's an alley? <laughs> yeah, there's an alley. How did that get there? We missed it. Okay. All right. So anyway, and there were several other people that said they got missed too in terms of garbage pickup. Oh. Was that around the 4th of July? Uh, not sure exactly when that was, but it had to be within the last week. See, they use uh, Sunrise... Um, the name of the company yeah. is Sunrise. But typically when there's a holiday like the 4th of July... Uh, garbage pickup, especially, is shifted one day. So mm -hmm. maybe they got caught on the. Well, upside. they picked up everybody else's, he said. <laughs> he just didn't pick his up. Yeah, so I anyway. I don't run that business. <laughs> you don't run that one. <laughs> okay. Um, he says, by the way, are you ever going to fix the crumbling sidewalks <laughs> in this town? Wasn't there, wasn't there a uh, money allocated to do that? They are working on it. And uh, that's what Mike McDonald actually brought forward. He said, we're actually pursuing that and getting it corrected. But he said, there's a lot of other things that we're working on as well. He said, one is um, um, local uh, Main Street that we're dealing with. I'm trying to think of the name of that road. Hmm. Anyhow, it's got to be in there somewhere. Elmwood? Yeah, Elmwood. Yeah. And that project is going to take place, I think, probably about September sometime. Yeah. They're going to actually tear that up and uh, repair it and make it nice for you folks, you know, travel that road. Um, let me see. Where are we with the uh, rural property ordinances? Um, oh, that came up. W not rural, but rental. I said rural. Rental. Spoken. It's rental in a rural area. Rental in a rural <laughs> area. It is in a rural area. No, it's not. It's in the village. But anyway, um, Mr. McDonald, he said, well, that's with the attorney. It's getting uh, worded. Uh, appropriately before it comes back you know to the console he said but we are working on that as well drains they said that there uh, are some bad areas on center street and at least two areas and it will require replacement of pipe about 250 feet long and so cool. they discussed how that was going to be taken care of and how in terms of finances for it they have thirty five thousand dollars in their contingency fund and so they, what they ended up doing is appropriating um, $10,000 from the contingency fund and moving it to the road fund, uh, the drains, in order to get this fixed, particularly since they're going to do the road down through there. So a good move. You used to call that robbing Peter to pay Paul. Yeah. Well, that's the way you do business. <laughs> I, I mean, you move from one account right. to the other. You, above all people, must know that. Yeah. Okay. He does accounting here. I'm Elgin Nichols. We'll talk more when we come back right after this. Battles aren't won solely on the field. That's a common misconception. Battles are won within. Over enemies of fear, enemies of doubt. In that place where promises are kept. Promises to oneself. Promises to one's community. Promises to one's country. In the heart of every Marine, you'll find a promise. A promise forever kept. A promise of battles won. 
Welcome back to Minutes by Minutes. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. We were talking about the Leonard Village Council meeting that they had the other day. <laughs> and uh, you mentioned Roland Hall a little bit earlier. Well, they're rebricking it, and it's just that project oh. is almost finished. So you folks will see a nice, fresh-looking hall when you when you visit the local government there. But the bricks up in the outside. <laughs> it's still the same good old hall on the inside. Yeah, it could be, uh, <laughs> what do they call it, coal bricking? Coal bricking inside. I'm not uh, sure. I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> you want to spread, spread a rumor? Okay. No, we can't do that. That one's yours. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty hard working inside, so I have to uh, extract that one. Uh, let me see. What else do they have going? Um, Roland Hall. Oh, no. He said there are no freedom of information requests, so he said that's clear. Uh, oh, by the way, they're going to put a water fountain um, near the Pollyann Trail. Uh, in um, On the mill side? On the mill side. Okay. And uh, I guess they have already poured a pad, cement pad, where it's going to be located. And uh, Bruce Pearson, Must be supervisor like of the township. Yeah, no, I don't know. Good, I, don't <laughs> I don't think it will be. <laughs> okay. This is a drinking fountain. Okay. Okay. Uh, Bruce Pearson is involved in this as well as your uh, president of uh, Leonard. Uh, Tom McDonald and they're all digging in to make this uh, reality so that will be done you'll see that happen uh, probably won't get any water in the winter because it would you know they're gonna have it shut off then I'm sure uh, they did talk about the festival coming up which is this week strawberry coming festival up. July 15th is the festival you folks if you catch this early enough before next week this pa week parades, parades ice cream ice strawberries cream. yeah all that good stuff and I hear they got soapbox derby this year too. Really? So, yeah. Oh wow! So anyway, lots of things going on in a little town of Edison, uh, Edison, Edison Township, Leonard. Uh, great little town. Uh, get out there and check it out. Now let's talk about the Oxford Township Board of Trustees. Which uh, on that board we have Bill Dunn, who's the township super supervisor. Almost didn't get that out. Curtis Wright, who's the clerk. And uh, of course, Joe Ferrari, who's the treasurer, and the trustees are Jack Curtis, Patty uh, Durr, um, March Payne, and you, and me. <laughs> yeah, I'd be the last guy in the line. So anyway, on that board, they did the pledge, of course, approval of the agenda, um, public comments. Ron Davis stood up and he said the Seymour Lake Festival was fantastic this year. He said that there were over fifteen thousand people that visited the Seymour Festival this year. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot of people. We were out there on the first day. We had our grandson. We were babysitting for him, and uh, that mm. was really quite something. Yeah, very successful. Um, everybody had a great time. He said uh, there were no real long lines. Um, he said that uh, the entertainment was uh, was very good. People had just a great time. I think uh, I think people that have been there for the first time they don't realize how nice that park is. Mm -hmm. How many individual activities can be held there? And I have to tell you, you know, those kudos to Ron Davis and his crew because he only has five people working with him. Wow! On this. So he counts on volunteers. Job. And by the way, if you'd like to pitch in and help next year, uh, it's going to be held uh, pretty much the same date in that, within that area. Of time, um, feel free to get a hold of Ron Davis or one of the people working uh, with the parks. And Meaning volunteer. he doesn't know the exact date, but it will be a weekend. It will be, and we'll let you know that. <laughs> and <laughs> and we'll probably we get to it. follow the Fourth of July. Yeah. And if you're not doing anything in your free time, you know you can join me. Why, well, of course. We're going to do that. Okay. Another thing that came up is uh, Simcog, which is an organization that uh, Southeast provides Michigan. What is that? Close enough. Organization of whatever. And of governments. <laughs> of government. and stuff. We'll say that governments and stuff. <laughs> But what it does is it uh, it provides um, highway information, you know, roads, what's happening within our uh, township, uh, trails information, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. statewide and so forth as well. Uh, parks funding, uh, grant information that's available, and they actually assist assist in in grant writing, that kind of thing. And of course, they're involved with legislation as well that impacts uh, you folks out there, you know, that uh, live in this community. So they felt it was a good idea, and they went ahead and they approved the do's and and um, and the don'ts. Yeah, well, Joe, <laughs> yeah, the don'ts. Joe Ferrari was assigned to uh, be representative of our township, so he'll attend these meetings. And Bill Dunn said, "Oh, by the way," he said, "I like to attend occasionally." They said, "Well, if you have to, you have to. We'll <laughs> have you." So uh, <laughs> both those guys would be pretty well involved, you know, with Simcog. So it was approved. Rezoning was the next issue. Uh, they want to change C1 local commercial to RM, multiple 
uh, family. And we did talk about this with That's the old... That's consolidation of zones, isn't it? It is. Well, it's, no, it's a change of zoning. Oh. Um, to RM, which is multiple uh, family. Uh, Oasis <laughs> of Waterstone. Remember we talked about that before? Oasis? <clears throat> yeah, it's called Oasis of Waterstone, which is a uh, Waterstone subdivision. And it's 4.5 acres and plus 2.73 acres involved in this. Uh, the company that wants to build these um, multi-family uh, units are Contour Development Group, and they're out of Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. How many units do they plan on building? <clears throat> well, I, you know, I did have that information. I don't have it here, so take a note Thank on you. that stack of yellow notes you have there. Gotcha. <laughs> Let's see gotcha. how this works out for him. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> they, uh, when it was all said and done, a lot of conversation occurred here. And the room was pretty well filled with uh, people from uh, Waterstone. Waterstone, yes. And they were certainly against this. They don't want to change it. It's not according to the master plan, that kind of thing. And uh, actually, there's an area for commercial. And like Bill Dunn said, there's enough commercial property available out there uh, for development where they it's not really it, necessary. They don't call it Market Street for nothing. Right, that's true. <laughs> and so anyway, uh, when it all, all the smoke cleared, uh, the board decided that they would send it back to the planning uh, development, uh, uh, the planning commission. And the reason why they're sending it back is because they didn't have all the information they needed. <clears throat> if they were to zone this, for example, uh, to RM, this company or any company coming into that area, according to ordinance, would be able to build a three or four story building in any number of uh, rooms that they want to have. You know, so. They want some kind of control on that, so they hmm. suggested maybe a PUD direct, uh, direction, which is a planned unit development, which the township then has better control of what goes in there. It can look more okay. like what's in there now as far as a community. So it was sent back to the Planning Commission, and I think it was a pretty smart move on their part. So it'll be reviewed again. You folks want to attend uh, the Planning Commission meeting uh, that's going to involve this particular subject down the line. Fire department was in recognition, of course, that we did talk about that with Pete Schultz and his fire department. And, of course, he, he was complimented, you know, as chief, uh, hitting up a, a, a great organization of men and women, you know, for um, Oxford Village or township coverage. Uh, I mean, they just do an extraordinary job, and even for other communities, as was pointed out, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, ordinance re uh, <coughs> readings were approved. Causing a police response ordinance is one that uh, actually is going to go along with state requirements down the line. And what that is, is if somebody um, calls the police and it's not a legitimate call, the person who calls that person or calls the police have to pay you know, for the response time required. Now, are they calling uh, Oakland County Dispatch for that? They could call Dispatch, exactly. Or they okay. could call local police, same thing. And then there's another... Um, but local police is also Oakland County Dispatch. That's true. But if they call a false call, somebody has to pay for it. And they're saying, at this point, if you make a false call, you're going to pay for it. Okay? Good that, idea. That's, that's <coughs> yeah. That, that's just, I don't know, just mischievous. <laughs> it is. Okay, so what's coming up? Well, we have a few meetings on 718 at 7 o'clock, the Village of Oxford Planning Commission. And at 6 o'clock that same day, the Board of Education is having a special meeting at the board offices. And on 720 at 7 o'clock, the Village of Leonard Planning Commission. Again. And at 430 that same day, NOTA, that North Oakland Transportation Authority, will be meeting at the Lake Orion Village offices. Not the Lake Orion Township offices, but the village offices. That's a little bit of a change. Mm -hmm. And on 724 at 4 p.m., the what? Oxford Area Cable Communications Commission. Oh, those our guys. parent body. <laughs> that would be you, for that sure. That would be you and possibly you. Well, possibly. Me and possibly you. They say they get this hook and they it's Elgin. Here you go. Because I, anyway. I understand we're going to be talking about drones. Who oh, are we? Yeah. Oh. That's a pretty good subject. Yeah. We'll talk more about that when we come back next segment. Yep. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. Catch you right here next time on Minutes by Minute. See you then.